You may be seated. To Pastor Morgan, Sister Morgan, Sister Reed, to all of these pastors and preachers, to all of you, our brothers and sisters, it's good to be here in the land of the dying, on our way to the land of the living. I'm certain that you've stopped already to say to the Lord, thank you for him bringing us safe this far. He didn't have to wake us this morning, but he did. That alone is enough to be thankful for. And then to have another chance to come and to worship the Lord. We worship him because of who he is. We praise him because of what he has done. And God is so awesome that there are some things about God that God himself has never seen. God has never seen a situation that he could not solve. <clears throat> God has never seen a sinner that he could not save. God has never seen a substitute for his son. God has never seen a sinner that could save himself. David said, can I say something? I said, what do you want to say, David? He said, well, I have been young, and now I'm old. But I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. He is an awesome God. I am certainly humbled by the invitation to come and to share with you on this wonderful occasion today and to be with my son, Pastor Morgan. is without a doubt the cream of the crop of preachers. Uh, you, I know you know by now that you don't find preachers like Tolan Morgan every day. <laughs> and I think I know what happened. Apparently, you treated the former pastor right. And so God says, since you treated the former pastor right, we're going to give you another one. <laughs> then have a beautiful wife that work with him and, uh, and then to see Sister Reed in this house and she's faithful come on let's bless God for Sister Reed I need to tell you all, before your pastor came here, I had never heard of Winter Roberts. <laughs> and I preached all around the area, but never here. 
but this is perhaps one of the best kept secrets on the planet. Enjoy it, our men. Come on, let's bless God for the men. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, men need the help of women. Uh, we don't like to let you know it, but we we need your counsel. You man, man went to the doctor. And said to the doctor, said, Doc, is something wrong with my wife? <laughs> the doctor said, what do you mean? He said, well, she won't talk. She won't cook. She won't clean the house. She won't make up the bed. She won't do nothing. Doctor said to her, well, bring her in. Let me examine her and see if I can find out what's going on with your wife. He brought her in and the doctor took her into the other room, stayed about 30 minutes, came back. He said to the man, I found out what's wrong with your wife. The man said, okay, doctor, show me what's wrong with my wife. He said, no, I'd rather tell you. He said, no, doc, show me what's wrong with my wife. He said, no, I don't think I need to show you let me tell you he said you my doctor show me what's wrong with my wife he said are you sure he said yes show me so the doctor grabbed her started kissing her and started hugging on her rubbing his hand through her hair and she got so excited, so jubilant, and was just laughing, going on. Doctor said, now, sir, she going to need this three times a week. Uh, on, on Monday, on Wednesday, and on Friday. The man said, okay, doctor, I can get her here on Monday and Tuesday. <laughs> Second, Second Chronicles, chapter 7, and verse 14. Second Corinthians, chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive them of their sins, and heal their land. Thank you so much. What, what do I do next? Help me say, what do I do next? Thank you so much. This passage contained 40 words. 40 is a fixed number in Scripture. Moses spent 40 years at the home of Pharaoh. He spent 40 years on the backside of the desert with Jethro. He spent 40 years leading Israel out of Egypt into the promised land. Which meant he spent 40 years thinking he was somebody. 
40 years discovering he was nobody. 40 years learning how God could take a nobody and make a somebody. He spent 40 days on Mount Sinai receiving the written law. Left the church in the hands of his assistant pastor, came back and they had started making another God. He had to go back and spend another 40 days to straighten up what they messed up. E Ezekiel laid on his right side 40 days as a protest against Judah. Jonah went to Nineveh, conducted a 40-day crusade, and turned the whole city around. Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness and was afterward tempted of the devil. After Jesus rose from the dead, he spent 40 days hanging around before he caught the Mount Olive cloud to go back. Forty stand for trials and probation. Anytime you see the number 40, that's what it stands for. This one scripture contains 40 words. And for you to be able to digest it, I need to cut it up so you can swallow it. Uh, he, he start by saying, if, that's possibility. My people, that's personal. Which are called by my name, that's paternal. Shall humble themselves, that's preparation. And pray, that's power. And seek my face, that's a privilege. Turn from thy wicked ways, that's procedure. Then will I hear from heaven, that's progress. And will forgive them of their sins, that's pardon. And heal their land, that's prosperity. Let's walk through it again. <clears throat> You start off by saying, if. Uh, if is that conjunction, but it is a conditioning conjunction. Uh, each conjunction does different things. There are several conjunctions that we like, uh, but is a contrast conjunction. That means the sinners start flowing in one way but when you get the but, it go another way. <laughs> Romans 6, 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is he turn life. And is a conjunction, but it's a connecting conjunction. It connect what has just happened to what's getting ready to happen. Most time it connects a promise with a principle. We love the promises, but we ignore the principle. Uh, therefore is a conjunction, but to understand it, you have to back up prior to the therefore to see what the therefore is there for. But if is a conditioning conjunction, this little if follow you everywhere you go. It's sandwiched in the word life. You spell life, L-I-F-E. Drop the L off the front of the word life, E off the back of the word life. Sandwiched in the middle is an if. I guess that's why the old people used to say, I'll see you next Sunday. <laughs> if it is the Lord's will, 
Matthew 16, 24, Jesus said, if any man will come after, if any man will come after me, let him first deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. John 12, 32, and I, if I be lifted from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. John 15, 7, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for what you will, and it shall be given unto you. Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 2 Corinthians 5 and 1, and we know that if this earthly house of this tabernacle we dissolve, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heaven. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, old things have passed away, behold all things have become new. Galatians 6 and 1, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Galatians 6 and 3, if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Galatians 6 and 9, let us not be weary in well-doing, for we shall reap if we faint not. 1 John 1 and 8, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. 1 John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1 and 10, if we say we have not sinned, we make him a lie. 1 John 2 and 1, these things write unto you that you sin not, but if you sin, we have an advocate with the Father. His name is Jesus Christ, the righteous. Revelation 3 and 20, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him. And he with me, he starts off by saying if. Then he say, he makes it personal, my people. See, I'm afraid we look in for answers in all the wrong places. We, we, we looking for the president to, to, to check, get things in order. We looking for the Congress and the House, the mayors, the governors, to set things in order. God did not give that to them. <laughs> You see, God is a jealous God. And we dictate a lot as to how God acts. If you check the scripture out, whenever the people of God start rebelling against God and start doing whatever we wanted to do, disobeying God, God would always do four things. First thing I always do is put a wicked king on the throne. Check out the scripture. The second thing I always do is send pestilence in the land. And then he would send a prophet to town and he would send his word. He's not looking for them to get it in order. He said if my people, because you must know God has invested so much in his people. We have been redeemed. God didn't save us for us to do nothing. God didn't bring us from darkness to the marvelous light just to brag about how holy we are. God puts something on the inside of us. Matthew 28, 18, Jesus came and speaks of all the power. The Greek word is exorcia, which means authority. Acts 1 and 8 says, ye shall receive power. The Greek word is dunamis. Ephesians 6 and 10, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power. The Greek word is kratos. 
Matthew 6 and 18, upon this rock I'll build my church. The Greek word for church is ekklesia. It means the call I want. He gets his ekousia, which is his authority, places it behind his ekklesia, which is his church, and then get his dunamis and put in the church. And tell the church to seize the opportunities which are before the church. What does that mean? That means the church can do two things. We can direct, but we can destroy. You can direct divine authority, but you can destroy demonic authority. Am I here by myself? In other words, you don't have to beat the devil running because of what you got on the inside of you. The devil will do the running. If my people which are called my people which are identified. You know, we like the identification. But even we don't want to put nothing in it. There's so many friends benefits come along with being a child of God. Y'all hear me, don't you? There's so many, ben I mean, you got so many benefits that you can just, you can walk up to stuff and say, in the name of Jesus. And remember say, you know, Reverend, I got a problem. I'm not able to get medical insurance. I said, listen, God is so awesome. If you can't afford the insurance, God will just keep you healthy. <laughs> Somebody ought to talk to me. <laughs> Lady came and said, Reverend, say, every time I turn around, there's always something. So I got a little money, got a little check, came in the mail. So as soon as I got the check, my compressor went out on my refrigerator. I got to take it and spin it to get the refrigerator repaired. I said, baby, let me tell you what happened. That compressor went out six months ago. But God kept it running <laughs> until your check came in. <laughs> If my people which are called, so I mentioned the word church, ecclesia, it's a compound word, e ek mean ex. That means every person that's a part of the body of Christ is because you exit out of something. All of us in here are ex something. <laughs> I see that pseudo halo over your head, but you ain't been holy all your life. Ex-pimp, ex-prostitute, ex-dope addict, ex-homonger, ex-liar, ex-gossiper, ex-cheat. <laughs> and some of you ain't too much ex yet. <laughs> the second part of the word for church, ex, is first part, second part is kaleo, mean to be called. You were exit out, but you call in. And see, it just so happened that this, this call has to do with a private party. <laughs> it's members only. Y'all don't hear me in this house. You see, God called you for a special reason. If my people which are called by my name, he said, you need to do three things. He said, number one, humble yourself. You see, it's easy to get lifted in pride. It's easy to think that you have already arrived. But God don't like folk that's got, that's lifted in pride. Talk to me somebody. He want us to humble ourselves. And when you see where you came from and what God brought you to, it's not hard to learn how to humble yourself. Got it. Some of us came from no those to a lot of those. From, from cotton sacks to Cadillac. <laughs> from rubber heels to rubber wheels. From neck bones to T-bones. Do I have any help in this house? Yeah, he brought us from a long ways and when we see where God brought us from, every now and then we need to learn how to humble ourselves and have talked to ourselves if it had not been. For the Lord that was on my side. 
where would I be? I got any help in this house. I know where he brought me from. Wasn't fitting to live. Too scared to die. Have to learn how to humble ourselves. You know, years ago, and I'll go on, years ago, we used to practice humility. That when we come to church, matter of fact, the men, the deacons would come with knee pads on. Because they were going to be on their knees praying. And they would even mention it when they prayed, say, now Lord, here we are. One more time with our knees bent and our bodies bowed. It came from the idea of biblical days when they wanted to carry a heavy load. They needed a beast that could go a long ways without water. And the only animal they could come up with was a camel. And old camel, because he was so tall, when the master would get ready to put a load on him, he would get in front of the camel and make him bow down. Then the master would put a load on the camel. And the camel would go during the course of the day, and in the heat of the day, his back would perspire, and the load would shift. So around noon, he would get in front of the camel again and make him bow down. And then the master would straighten up his load. And then he'd carry the camel the rest of the day. And in the evening, when it was time to bed down, the camel couldn't rest with a heavy load. So the master would get in front of him at bedtime and make him bow down, and the master would take the load off of him. Well, our master have a load for us to carry. So in the morning before you leave home, he wants you to bow down, and the master put a load on you. And as you go during the course of the day, folks lying on you, you're trying to dodge the lies, and folks scandalize your name, you're trying to dodge all that stuff, your load will shift on you. So around noon, you need to bow down and let the master straighten up your load. And then in the evening, you can't sleep at night with a heavy load. Wondering where your children are, that's a heavy load. Wondering if your spouse is going to come home, that's a heavy load. So before you go to bed at night, bow down and let the master take the load off of you. And when it take the load off, anybody know you can sleep way on up all night long. <sighs> Gotta humble themselves. And then they say, and pray. Shout pray. You see, prayer is always in order. Yeah, prayer, prayer, prayer changes things. Prayer changes situation. Prayer changes circumstances. Talk to me, somebody. They ain't got time to deal with it this morning, but there are a lot of words in the original language for the word prayer. Pros, UK is one Greek word for the word prayer. Pros, P-R-O-S, is an intimate word. It means face to face. That when you pray, you become face to face with your heavenly Father. Talk to me, somebody. You can mean wish or desire. That means you come face to face with your wish or desire. Now, we like to recite Psalms 37, 4, where it said the Lord will give you the desires of your heart. It said that, but not all of that. Because the emphasis is not on desire, it's on delight. <laughs> it said if you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. And you know what I discovered? When you start delighting in the Lord, he'll change your desire. The stuff you used to desire, before you start delighting in the Lord, you don't desire that stuff no more. Do I have a witness? He must. Let me get out of here. He must humble himself and pray. Notice he said, you can't pray right until you humble yourself. You know, that's a, that's a dangerous prayer that we got to watch. Matthew 6 and 12, and forgive us 
of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lord. <laughs> and, and that messes up because a lot of us got some stuff we've been holding. And we won't let it go yet. You see, forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is for you. See, when you fail to forgive a person, <laughs> y'all don't hear me, <laughs> it's like drinking your own poison and expecting it to kill the other person. Y'all don't like me this out. But when you forgive a person, you set them free. I've had to do some people that way that owe me money. I just had to say, Lord, I'm just going to go on and forgive them and the debt. Because it's one thing about when a person owe you, it can be 40 years later. And you see him, soon you see him, that Negro owe me. <laughs> Y'all looking at me strange in this house. Yeah, you have to go on and let it go. Because Psalms 166, 166, 66, verse 18 says, If you have iniquity in your heart, God don't hear you. So that means I don't need to let some junk get between me and God. Uh, Y'all hear me, don't you? I want him to hear my prayer. It's a uh, humble themselves and pray. Then watch what it says, and seek my face. Uh, in other words, seek the presence of the Lord. I, my, my son, I got a son named Frank Jr. Frank Jr., when he was 16, 17 years of age, he would come and say, Daddy, can, can I use your car? I said, yes, Junior, it's all right. He thought about it a little bit. He come back and said, but daddy, got no money. Would you let me hold a few dollars? I said, yeah, Junior, I gave you some money. That meant he wanted my possessions. He wanted my price. But then when I said to him, June, I think I'm going to ride with you tonight. He said, no, daddy. I don't need you to go with me. In other words, he wanted my possessions. He wanted my price, but he didn't want my presence. That's the way we are with God. We want what God has to offer us. I've got any hip in this house. We want the money God bless us with, but we don't want God hanging around because it might hinder the mess we in. If my people, <laughs> which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. I had to talk to the Lord about that. I said, wait a minute, God. We talking about safe folk. We talking about your people. Are you trying to tell me safe folk is wicked? He said, well, I did not say they're wicked. <laughs> he said, but they got some wicked ways. Y'all hear me, don't you? What's it mean, wicked ways? Say folk got some wicked ways. Well, ask God for a blessing. Pray and ask God to give them a job. And God bless them with a job. Give them health and strength to go to it. Give them transportation to get there. Talk to me, somebody. Let them have a big check and they'll turn around on Sunday and tip God instead of paying their tithes. Shout wicked ways. Talk to me, somebody, that you don't mistreat the person that opened the door for you. Because what I have, God gave me. 
when I know God taught me. The reason I'm still here is because God is keeping me. Do I have a witness? Now watch what he said, and I'm out of here. He said, there are three or four things you got to do before I move. He said, number one, you got to humble yourself. Secondly, he said, you got to pray. Third, he said, seek my face. And then he said, turn from your wicked ways. And watch what the text says, then. Yeah, you know, you hear people say, I'm waiting on God. But God said, I'm waiting on you. Anybody know that God can change this situation? I know we're waiting on it to change in the White House. But can I let you in on a little secret? God hold the king's heart in his head. God can move him whenever God getting ready to move him. God said, he's not my problem. You're my problem. He said, I'm waiting on you to set your house in order. Anybody know that God will? Y'all hear me, don't you? Help me say, my God will. He said, then will I hear from heaven. He said, I will forgive them of their sins. That means we've been committing sin. Shout sin one time. Sin soils and spoils. Sin chokes and provokes. Sin tarnishes and punishes. Sin mars and bars. Sin itches and switches. <laughs> Have I got a witness him? I asked the Lord, I said, what did you do with my sins? He's in Psalms 85, 2. He's our cover man sin. And Psalms 103, verse 10. He said, God does not judge man according to his sin. And never reward him according to his iniquity. Psalms 103 verse 12 says, Far as the east is from the west, that's how far he cast my sin. Job 14 17 said, Took my sins and put in a bag and sold up the bag. Michael 7 19 said, Cast my sins in the depths of the sea. Isaiah 38 say he took my sins uh, and cast them in the sea of forgiveness. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, Colossians 50 verse 20 in there. Say sought for our sins uh, and they could not be found. Uh, do I have a witness? Uh, Colossians 2 14 uh, say took my sins uh, on a hill called Calvary and now my sin to Calvary's cross, uh, Hebrew 1 and 3, uh, so, so affected that he purged man of his sin uh, that he went home and sit down uh, on the right hand side of the Father. Uh, Hebrew 10, 17, uh, so he remember my sins no more. First uh, John 1 and 7, uh, so he washed my sins uh, in his own blood. Uh, I'm out of here. Thank y'all for letting me stop by the but can I let you in on a secret? Uh, the God I serve, uh, He's able. Anybody in the name of He's able uh, to get us where we need to be. Uh, have I got a witness in there? Anybody know He's able? Uh, my God, uh, the God I serve, uh, He's an able God. Uh, it is said uh, that there were two ports that showed up at Calvary when Jesus died. Uh, they came to write him a poem, uh, but everything they got ready to write, uh, one of the writers, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, uh, had already recorded it. Uh, and one port said to the other, let's watch the blood. They saw blood coming from the Lord's forehead. They saw blood coming out of his hands. They saw blood coming out of his side. They saw blood running from his feet. One port said, let's follow the blood. 
see where the blood is going. Uh, at the foot of the hill uh, was an old spotted leopard uh, that had spotted the ports, uh, waiting for them to get close uh, so they could devour both ports. Uh, but thank God uh, the blood of Jesus uh, got there before the ports got there. Uh, and that old leopard licked down uh, and started licking some of the blood. Uh, his nature changed. Uh, instead of being vicious, uh, he became as humble uh, as a little lamb. Uh, one port said, I know what I can right now. Uh, what can wash away my sin? Uh, nothing. Uh, but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus the other poets I wonder if that's enough blood to go around the poets that look around he's all I see there is a fountain filled with blood drawing from Emmanuel's pain, uh, sinner's blood uh, beneath thy flood. Uh, Lulu, uh, thou killed and stained. Uh, shake somebody's hand. Uh, say, neighbor, can I tell you one thing? Uh, it was the blood uh, that saved me. Uh, one day. One day, uh, hey, uh, hey, one day, uh, when I was lost, uh, hey, uh, he died, uh, he died, uh, he died. Up on the cross, I know, I know, I know. Just tap one person, tell him I've got to give him praise just because he washed my sins away. He put it in a bag, put it in the sea, washed it in his blood. Now all the blood washed saints, if you've got reason to give him glory for nothing else, give him glory because he washed your sins away. people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray seek my face turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven I'll heal their sins 